It's good to have you live this morning on Friday's Coffee with Todd. I so enjoy doing these each and every morning and uh, hopefully just making an impact with these nuggets of ideas. And certainly the, the interviews that we're doing on Tuesdays and Thursdays are second to none, in my opinion, 30 to 35 minutes of really solid content. And uh, we're going to continue to do this in unique ways to bring value to you on a regular basis. So again, I appreciate very, very much in the, the kind of the, the state of our affairs. That can be the busyness of the mortgage business. Uh, you know, looking at the 10-year treasury today, looking at interest rates, you know, it looks like uh, mortgage volume is back up again. I talked to a a top producer yesterday and she said i have 172 files in process with three processors and it's almost as if i i, I can't and don't want to take anymore and uh and then you look at real estate rebounding a little bit you look at uh buyers getting active for the summer selling season and uh you know some of the the release i think that we have felt this week from maybe some of the covid lockdowns and restrictions although i'm still a little bit worried about uh over correcting I'm sad when I see protests and riots and, and things like that around uh, just the, the energy uh, that COVID has produced, good and bad. Uh, I talked to a couple of my friends yesterday in Minneapolis, and uh, they were all over the news yesterday. And, you know, so it's a, it's a, it's a tough world. It's, a, it's an interesting world. And uh, my commentary on uh, this, what we're going through, is it will pass, and we will be better off as individuals. I think we're going to be better off as companies. Having looked at capacity in the last three or four months, you know, what is, what's the magic formula for capacity? And I was writing an email yesterday that was one of our marketing pieces. And um, I made a comment on that email. I said, you know, um, easy markets are hard and hard markets are hard. And I said, easy markets are hard because the volume is there, but the capacity is tested. And hard markets are hard because the, capacity is there, but the volume isn't. And so it's always a juggling act between, uh, you know, how much can we do and, you know, how much of the elephant can we actually eat one bite at a time? And when are we actually full? And, and when do we, when do we say no, you know? And so it was, it was just kind of interesting as I think through everything we're going through. Um, and, uh, you know, my hope for, for you guys and, and obviously for, for us is that, uh, as I said, four weeks ago that, that we learned some really great lessons as a result of how, as individuals, we go through what we're going through. And I'm sure you've learned a lot of lessons. I'm sure you've had some personal innovations and breakthroughs. And, uh, and I'm certain that you've become better in the midst of the pressure. You know, diamonds are, diamonds are produced by significant, enormous pressure. And, and hopefully that metaphor is on the other end of this. We come out uh, better, shining, stronger, healthier, wealthier, all that kind of good stuff. So what is the message today? Well, the message today was about an hour and a half ago. I was uh, in bed with a cup of coffee and, and chatting with uh, Deb, my wife, and we were talking about um, this new Connect series that we're in the midst of of creating and, and having launched. And you know, I made a decision at the front end of COVID that what I would do is I'd record brand new content around what does connection really mean? So what does connection mean with yourself? What's connection mean with your family? What's connection mean with your God? Um, what does true connection look like as a leader to employees? What does leadership and connection look like from originators to borrowers to real estate agents and builders? Um, what does it mean, a connection from an agent to a seller or to somebody looking to buy a home? And I've been fascinated with the journey. I've, I've produced a, a session plan of 16 videos, about an hour long each, and I've produced a playbook and in some cases, multiple playbooks for different sessions. And one of the sections that, that really is getting, um, uh, I think, a lot of energy around it as I talk to people is what does connection really look like in relationship, right? So what I, what I, what I wanted to do is just talk through um, kind of a, a formula, if you will. It's pretty simple. It's four things that get added together. And when those four things are added together, then connection happens, right? So before I tell you those, why connection? Well, connection is the only thing that really, really matters in the world. 
I mean, if you're a if you're a parent, um, uh, and I know this is hard being a parent, but connecting with your kids in real and dynamic ways as they get older and older and older is super important. As they move out, a different level of connection as kind of parent mentors and watching our our young our young men and women venture out on on their own into the world and and connection there and um you know it it, it never stops it never stops uh in a relationship a marriage a partnership connection is the mother load and, and the reason why is because if if connection does not exist then you end up with a dysfunctional partnership or marriage and a dysfunctional partnership or marriage is one that probably won't survive unless you really understand these four points that I'm about to share with you. I think about um, all the opportunities we've had and feeling so blessed with being able to <clears throat> you know, shape an industry since 1992 when I founded the Duncan Group and having made a choice way back then uh, that in my first year as a loan officer, I would choose relationship over transaction. And I made a decision that that if I could have really deep, powerful, productive, connected relationships with people, then all the transactions would follow. I would never have to worry about getting business if what I focused on was connecting with people. And so, again, if you didn't see the, the blurb Ray just put up, um, I want you to I want you to throw up again, Ray, and just guys go to hightrust.com forward slash connect and just check this program out. Um, this uh, this material is not available anywhere else. Uh, it is only hosted on our learning management system. It is password protected, and um, and it's the freshest stuff I've ever come up with. And I want you to I want you to have it. I want you to be part of it. It's uh it's an amazing, amazing resource. And I think it'll, I think it'll do two things for you. I think it'll give you a, a more intentional approach to relationships where they flourish and they're more productive and, and less dramatic. And I think it will also help you set the stage for the power of your own personal power, the connection that you have with self and your inner who you are, right? And, um, and then as we kind of roll through the Connect program, we're, we, we, we spend a lot of time uh, in, in what does this look like professionally? And how do we create impact? How do we create influence in our relationships professionally? And the idea is very simple. If, if I and somebody else come together and we are engaged in a, a high trust relationship, what are the components of that? And how does that relationship spin up? So what that I think starts out looking like is uh, I think all the way back to maybe, I don't know, 25 years ago, I met a guy named Dr. Tony Alessandra. Tony and I are still friends and, and Tony lives in La Jolla, California. And Tony said that, he said, if two people want to do business together, the details will not stand in the way. He went on to say in that same quote, if two people don't want to do business together, the details won't make it happen. And so when you, when you really understand that, business is hard when you fundamentally don't like each other. Business is easier when you fundamentally like each other. And when we talk about high trust and we talk about <clears throat> high trust interviewing, high trust knowledge acquisition and, and things like that, and the kind of the questions that you ask and the depth in which you listen, it is all assumptively built on the idea that the two people that are in a partnership professionally, let's use for just this coffee with Todd, um, have to have to like each other. I'd go so far as to say they have to they have to love each other. So here are the four things, and, and I'll give you each one with about a 90-second why, and then you'll see how it all adds up. So what's first is the word chemistry, and you may want to just, if you're watching this, jot that down, because this is going to be the formula for your success. Chemistry is essentially um, likability and attractability, two things. And they're, they're both kind of the same. If, if you're likable and, and, and I like you and you like me, then we are naturally attracted to each other through chemistry. I'm not talking about 
you know, relationship, love, chemistry, like a date or your spouse or all of that. But I, I could argue that if chemistry isn't there in any relationship, then nothing else in that relationship is functional. And, and, and arguably, it may not even be a paid attention to because why would you pay attention to another human being where chemistry is void or compromised or not what it is? <clears throat> I think about liking people. I think about, you know, being liked and chemistry should be effortless. I think that's important to point out. Effortless means that we work together. Does it mean that there are no challenges? No. Does it mean that there are no speed bumps? No. What it does mean is that because of chemistry and two other things, we can work through those challenges. And there will be challenges because of the formula I'm about to share with you. So chemistry is likability and, and, and attractiveness to each other. And before you do business with people, it's really helpful to understand the chances of likability. I remember um, early in my loan origination career, I had a wonderful, wonderful friendship with a guy named Ron Songrath. And Ron was a, a high performing title rep at First American Title. And I remember having conversations with Ron as I spent nearly 11 years doing loans about agents that I wanted to do business with. And Ron knew me well, and I knew Ron well. We had a chemistry relationship. We liked each other. And um, when I would call Ron and, and ask Ron about, let's just, one of the gals I remember is a gal named Sets Mori. She was a high-performing agent at Century 21 Agency. And I remember calling Ron when Sets got on my radar. And I said, Ron, what do you think about me and Sets? Do you think we're a, a good match? And uh, he said, you guys would be awesome together. You think the same way. You have the same kind of energy and passion. I think you would be really, really good together. So I had a little bit of an endorsement before I then approached Sets and, and, and got an appointment with her and then sat down and, uh, and, and, and got deep into the next C, which is conversation. And, uh, and it went on to be one of my best relationships for the better part of a decade. So, so chemistry is a, about being attracted. Um, chemistry is about knowing that you're a match, knowing that you stand for the same things and you like the same things and you believe in the same things so that you can have an effortless relationship. Okay. So when the relationship is effortless, then chemistry opens the door for conversation and conversation is mutual bonding. Conversation should produce win-win outcomes. Conversation should be healthy and non-defensive. Conversation should be centered around um, how do we win together. Conversation should be regular. It should be consistent. It should have measurable improvements. It should be accountable. It should have follow-up activities. And when lenders have conversations with real estate agents, if you do it the right way, then there will be follow-up activity necessary to spin the relationship up. If an agent has a, a great you know, chemistry with a buyer, then conversation spins up the energy between the buyer and the agent on what they can achieve together professionally and, and, uh, and, and personally. So you, you think about that and you go, okay, so am I having enough conversations? And then what is the actual quality of the conversations I'm having? And here's what's interesting. When I take chemistry and I build on top of that conversation, it opens the door to collaboration, which is the third C. And collaboration is a relationship between two people that like each other, that are having great conversation, and it is bringing the conversation to life. What do we need to do here? What are your ideas about this? Here's a couple things that I have thought about. That's collaboration. What collaboration leads to is potentially belief from each party on how do we do this? We may agree on what we need to do, but we may have different thoughts or methodologies or ideas around how to do it. And that's what leads to conflict resolution. So back to my, my, uh, my morning time with coffee and, and my wife, um, conflict resolution is not a negative concept. Conflict resolution is a very positive concept. If there is conflict and it's idea conflict, 
it doesn't say that there's no chemistry, love, and conversation. What it says is we're getting to a point where we need to decide which way we go together. And that's the power of conflict resolution. And what's interesting about conflict resolution is that most people treat conflict as negative. The only conflict that is negative is when you're in a business relationship with somebody with whom you have no chemistry. That's the kind of conflict resolution that is going to be toxic, that is going to take energy and is going to drain you of the vitality that a relationship should provide. So when I have chemistry with you, I have massive chemistry with my wife. Okay, we talk all the time. We collaborate on a regular basis. And sometimes she wants to go right and sometimes I wanna go left, but I'm not going right because I don't wanna be with her when she goes left and she's not going left because she doesn't wanna be with me when I go right. It's just two different pathways. So how do we bring that together through resolving whatever differences we may have around ideology and putting things into play? And therein lies the opportunity to really provide and present solutions to the relationship that are healthy and, and warrant at least a decision around which way do we go. And I think a lot of people, um, because chemistry isn't as high as it should be, are conflict avoidant. And when you're conflict avoidant, because chemistry isn't what it should be, what ends up happening is you disserve the relationship. You, you don't focus as much on the stuff that is necessary, the positive stuff to get the, you know, to get the relationship going the right way, but you haven't terminated the relationship. I see this all the time with managers who um, they'd rather just go silent than deal with the conflict. And at the end of the day, the only, the only thing that happens when you don't deal with a conflict in a relationship that does not have chemistry is it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And I've told managers all the time that, you know, the most expensive time in your life is the time between when you give up on somebody and the time you do something about it. So in my mind, they, they happen in that order. If I have a natural attraction in the form of chemistry, I will have, as will the other party, a desire for conversation. If the conversation is regular, um, creative, explorative, coming up with ideas and thoughts, it will lead to collaboration, which is discussion about how. And then when collaboration is activated, it produces tension on which way to go, which is the conflict resolution piece. And when you successfully resolve conflict, then you're able to experience connection. And one of the things that our high trust coaches are super, super dialed into is helping you master the high trust conversation. And if you have not had a conversation yet with our certified coaches, you need to do that. It's absolutely free. There's absolutely no obligation. And all you have to do is go to hightrustcoaching.com and schedule a free coaching call. Our certified coaches will lead you through this. And I need you to understand something. Um, coaching is a very positive thing. So watching a documentary two nights ago, Elon Musk has a brain coach. If you can imagine having a brain coach to help you in your entrepreneurial creativity, that told me, man, everybody needs a coach. I have two coaches. I have a, I have a, an energy and, and brain management coach, you know, to help me stay as inspired and creative and forward thinking and, and feared less fullness than I do by dreaming big dreams. I have a, a life coach that I work with um, every Tuesday, you know, and, and I believe in it. And I was listening to an interview that we had on stage at Mastery last year with a gal named Lisa Wills. Lisa works with PNC and she first got exposed to us and our coaches helped her define at the very front end that she was making about $34 an hour. And this would have been evaluated in January of last year. By the time August rolled around, Lisa was at $535 an hour. And by the time she was on stage at Sales Mastery last year, she was at $864 an hour. So why I want you to go to hightrustcoaching.com is to check it out, really. I mean, no, no, no strings attached. Have a conversation. What are, your, what are your challenges right now that you would like guidance and, 
and leadership through? You know, what are the the things that you're you're not even really cognizant of that that in your business modeling um, are are the wrong thing, or or the the efficacy of that thing is not what it needs to be. Um, even getting down to the simplicity of how hard am I working? How hard am I working? How hard am I working? And and is there an easier path that would help me make more money, not less? And um, I see that April Blackwell just posted in. If you've not watched the interview I did with April uh, two weeks ago, you need to watch that. This girl is full of positivity and she, blind faith, uh, got involved in coaching and um, out of the gates, man, trusted the system, trusted the process. And I got a text from her two days ago and she said, I have more leads year to date than I had the entire year last year. Part of that is how she's farming and prospecting. Part of that is how, you know, obviously the the industry right now has a lot of interest in in low rate refinancing, so on and so forth. But she is a dialed in pro. So go back and listen to that interview. If you want to, if you want to check out the impact of coaching, go listen to that interview. And then the final thing I'll say is, if if you're watching this and you have not um, asked us to invite you in to High Trust today which is our private Facebook group, you need to go there. High Trust Today is where the coaching universe, all the members and all the coaches are interchanging and sharing ideas on a regular basis, any of which you can yank off of there. And Wednesday mornings, we showcase one of our certified coaches and they go live for a half hour, but in a teaching and Q&A kind of way. So three ac- actions, connect, hightrust.com forward slash connect, check it out, hightrustcoaching.com schedule a free coaching call and come to high trust today the private facebook group put your name in if you're not a member let us let you in so we can continue to help you win all right thanks for 20 minutes of your time always a joy connecting with you guys and love you tons have a blessed safe and relaxing weekend and we'll be with you next week monday morning nine o'clock see ya